Am I the asshole for asking my sister where she got her babies from? The title is weird, but this situation is weirder. My sister, 25, has struggled with infertility problems for years. She and her husband got married at 16 and have been trying since they were 18 for a baby. Doctors have basically told her she will never have a biological child. My sister is also extremely against infant adoption. Never even mention it to her. She'll rant about it and how it should be banned for hours. Her husband was adopted as an infant, so I guess it comes from that. They have tried IVF in the past, which hasn't worked. And while they aren't totally against surrogacy, they aren't fans and have stated multiple times they would never go that route. Anyway, 10 months ago, my sister posted an Instagram post welcoming her daughter into the world. Of course, we were all ecstatic initially. She was healthy, beautiful, and all around an amazing baby. For the first three months of her life, no one really noticed anything odd. I think we all assumed my sister had just kept a pregnancy secret or something because she breastfeeds. We weren't aware you could lactate without giving birth. As the months went by, the baby started coming into her features. Baby is clearly, ethically, something else. Facial features and even skin tone match neither of her parents. We are Mexican and her husband is Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. Still, we didn't say anything because genetics can be weird. We assumed maybe she adopted and didn't want to go back on her previous statements. Except... Four months ago, it happened again. This time, they welcomed their son into the world. But she also added on that she herself was in her second trimester of her pregnancy with their third, her first successful pregnancy. So this is getting weird. A cousin asked if they had finally adopted, at which point my sister got upset and reiterated that they would never. At this point, I'm really suspicious. So finally, last week, I asked her where the hell her other two kids are from. They clearly aren't. The son could maybe pass off because he looks like her husband. And if she's still spewing BS about adoption being trauma, how the hell did she get them? She ended up getting really upset with me. Her husband got pretty angry as well, and they got up and left. My entire family is more or less backing me because we are really concerned about where the hell these kids are from. She has seemingly blocked most of us on social media where she posts about her kids and a few mu mutual friends and are really angry over it asking why I have to push and why I can't just be happy for her. It's sort of put us in a bind. I am concerned about the kids, but I also want to be in my sister's life. I don't feel like my ask was too out of the ordinary considering how strange this situation is. I don't know. Am I the asshole? Reddit personal issues. I, 27 female, am with my deceased sister's husband, 31 male. What am I supposed to do with these emotions? My sister was killed by a drunk driver on her way home from work three years ago. She had been married to Brian for six years, and when she was killed, they had an 18-month-old daughter. Obviously, this death took a toll on our entire family, my parents in particular. Brian was, of course, devastated and heartbroken. He has good family, and they were very supportive of him, and his mom came to stay with him for three months after the accident to help with the baby. 
She, however, could not take off any more time from work, and Brian was faced with the very real problem of childcare and having to work full time with no help. At this point in time, I had lost my job due to budget cuts, and I offered to help him out. He wanted to pay me, but I told him that I would not take anything from him because this was my niece and I did not want to lose touch with her. So what he started doing was providing me food every day. In other words, he would buy groceries and I was free to use whatever I wanted. This worked out for a while, but it was becoming expensive driving back and forth every day with no income coming in. At four months in, he came to me with the idea of fixing up the downstairs bedroom and asking if I wanted to stay on and take care of her full time until I found a job. He knew the gas was getting to be in, and not to mention I didn't have the best of cars. I spoke with my parents just to make sure nobody would be creeped out by this and told them that this was just a babysitting gig to help keep my niece close to me. I felt like in many ways, this was a way of keeping my sister close to me as well. I've lived here now for almost two years, which I do not regret. However, here is the complications. I am insanely close to my niece. I love her as though if she were my own, and the thought of her now being with anyone else actually will cause me to have a panic attack. The other problem is that I have absolutely respected Brian, his boundaries, and the memory of my sister. However, as time has moved and we eat dinner together every night, watch TV together, we have shopped together, and will honestly have been very close to each other over the loss of his wife and my sister, there have been many of nights one of us has held the other as they cried. In many ways, this has been very helpful getting through this. I actually feel like I get strength from him sometimes when I get sad, and I really feel like I have helped him as well. He has had grief counseling over the past two years. I know for a fact he has not seen, dated, or really even looked at another woman. In fact, about six months after the funeral, he told me he would never get married again and did not see him ever loving anyone again. I know that was the hurt talking, but for about three years now, he has held fast to that. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Despite my best efforts, and believe me, I know how sick this is and how much I am not honoring my sister, but I have fallen in love with him. We have never touched each other in anything other than the gentle hugs of people comforting one another. To be honest, I know he feels the same way I do. How do I know that, you might ask? Well, here is where I further admit to being a bad person. His iPad is synced up to his phone and his Facebook messages go to both. I was picking up in the living room when his iPad dinged and his messenger went off to save screen. I saw my name. Normally, I don't look, but I saw my name on there, and while I know it was wrong, I opened up his page upon page, long conversation that he was having with his brother, admitting that he was falling for me. The gist conversation was how he felt very confused and, of course, guilty over my sister. His brother's advice to him was to not really engage me in anything because he felt like he was just trying to copy his life with my sister. I love my sister. I miss her every day. I am not my sister. We do look similar, but certainly are not identical, and our personalities could not be more different than one another. Anyway, I am now caught in my own moral quandary. I know how I feel about him. I know how he feels about me. Do I say anything to him? Do I profess my feelings for him? Or is his brother right? Also, would this be dishonoring my sister? Even though my niece calls me Aunt Rachel, not my real name, by the way, I feel like we have bonded and she is really like my daughter. Look, 
If life was fair, my sister would be here. I would have finished my degree and would be working on the West Coast by now. This is so confusing. I honestly think my parents already think something is going on, so telling them I don't think would come as much of a shock. Now the bigger problem is, what if this doesn't work out or if we never get involved? How the hell are either of us going to find a significant other while we are living together raising my niece? Help, please.